Hello and welcome to the second video in the Getting Started with the STA UHD Producer Plugin video tutorial series. The UHD Producer Plugin, made by Sonic Tier Audio, is a new panning plugin that allows for flexible panning and monitoring of immersive formats that Pro Tools doesn't directly support. In this video, we'll take a look at the plugin's signal flow and walk through the steps of setting up a basic Pro Tools session. Panning plugins like the STA UHD Producer plugin impact your session's signal flow in a way that's a little bit out of the ordinary. Let's take a look at how signal flow works when using this plugin. First, signal comes into your session's tracks as normal, either via a live input, as would be the case with an auxiliary track, or via clips on an audio track. Next, signal goes to the SDA UHD Producer plugin, which resides on an insert on each track contributing to your mix. Since this plugin enables production for immersive output formats that Pro Tools doesn't normally support, the processed output doesn't proceed to the next stages of your tracks as normal, but rather goes through a dedicated connection to another plugin that manages this critical multi-channel signal information. This summing is achieved via two STA plugins that are instantiated on two 7.1 auxiliary tracks. These plugins take all of the input from the outputs of all of the STA UHD producer plugins elsewhere in your session. And finally, the output of these two aggregators is routed to multi-channel or binaural monitoring. The first thing to do is to instantiate the STA UHD producer plugin on any track that you want to include in your mix. This would include not only any audio tracks upon which you have audio clips, but also any auxiliary input tracks for time-based plugins like reverbs or delays. Now where to instantiate this plugin is a question. If you consider that after this instantiation, the signal will be going to two STA summing plugins, then you'd come to the conclusion that any inserts after the STA UHD producer plugin would not impact your mix. For this reason, it's generally recommended that your plugin be instantiated on the last insert of your track so that your other plugins, things like EQs, compressors, reverb, and the rest are included in the signal feeding the STA summing plugin. As you learned in the first video in this series, all instantiations of the STA UHD producer plugin share a common mix window, and you saw how changes made in the mix window of one plugin window would be mirrored throughout all other instantiations of the plugin in your session. Let's take a look under the hood of the mix window and see how the signal flow from the panning plugins will be routed to the summing plugins. As you learned in the first video, the left side of the matrix section will give you your channel names, based upon the output format that you've chosen and will give you the ability to apply some delay on a channel by channel basis if your monitoring system requires it. In this video, let's take a closer look at the matrix section. Though it may look a bit daunting at first, the matrix router is actually pretty simple. The Y axis on the left side represents the input channels. In this case, left is input number one, right is input number two, center is input number three, and so on. If you take a look at the bottom of the matrix grid, the numbers that you see here are the output assignments. In other words, the order in which the channels feed the STA summing engine. Let's take a look at a couple of scenarios. For the purposes of explanation, I've set up a track with a signal only on the center channel. In our first example, we have a completely linear matrix, meaning that the input number and the output number are the same. So in this case, the center channel, being input three, would be routed to output number three, feeding the STA summing engine. You see this not only reflected in the meters at the top of the STA plugin, but also in the meters of the destination auxiliary tracks, something we'll discuss in more detail next. Now let's change the output order to another common setup. Instead of the channels being left, right, center, let's make them left, center, right. It's easily done by just clicking what you want to change in the matrix grid, and the STA plugin does the rest, making sure there are no overlaps of signals. So now, you'll see that we've assigned input number three to output number two. Our meters at the top of the plugin have changed accordingly, as well as the meter on the destination auxiliary track. Now that you've got your plugins instantiated on your source tracks and have used the matrix to route the signals as you like, the only thing remaining to do is to get the signal out of Pro Tools and to your speakers. Fortunately, this is easily accomplished. The first thing you'll want to do is to create two new 7.1 auxiliary input tracks. Here again, you'll launch the STA UHD producer plugin, but notice that in this case, the window that comes up is much different. 
All you can do here is to choose the channels that you want to assign to each of the plugins. Typically, you'd assign the first one to channels 1 through 8, and the second one to channels 9 through 16, as shown here. The very last part of the process is to assign the output of each of those aux tracks to separate 7.1 buses. Keep in mind that the output channels of the STA summing engine map to the conventional channels of these 7.1 buses. For example, STA output number 1 would be the first channel of the first 7.1 bus, labeled as a left channel. And the STA output number 9 would correspond to the first channel of the second 7.1 bus, also labeled as a left channel, but on the second 7.1 bus. These two 7.1 buses are interface buses and should be mapped to output paths. We'll talk more about setting up a multi-channel monitoring environment in the third video in this series. And that takes us to the end of our discussion on setting up a basic Pro Tools session for use with the STA UHD producer plugin. Other videos in this series will look more in depth at how to set up your Pro Tools session, different features, and even some tips and tricks. To learn more, visit www.sonictieredu.com learning.